Hello, and welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Brandy. And I'm Alan. Today we are going to do our Top 5 Kid Performances, yes. meaning uh, young kids, 12-ish and under, mm-hmm. who really wowed us in different performances. I actually thought this was a harder list to put together than I For, uh, than yeah. I anticipated. There's a lot of good good stuff out there, you know, mm-hmm. so... Um, all right, let's get going. Okay. Uh, my number five from a movie that is uh, well known to be one of my favorite movies of all time, and I will not apologize for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Macaulay Culkin as Kevin McAllister in Home Alone. He was nine, I believe, mm-hmm. when they filmed this, mm-hmm. eight or nine, and that performance sells the film. Like without oh, yeah. without a kid who does that good of a job, that movie is so annoying. Like it, it, <laughs> you know, it would have been. Yeah. But. Honestly, the casting of him made the film. And then, of course, you know, Daniel Stern and uh, uh, Joe Pesci are great mm-hmm. as well. And But they have to have something to play off of besides each other in order right. for there to be any point. And honestly, like, solid. Uh, if there it's are any awesome. MacGuffiners out there in the Seattle area who want to come to my fourth annual Home Alone drinking <laughs> game party, it happens at my house every Christmas. Email me, let me know. <laughs> awesome. Not much more that needs to be said. <laughs> um, We've made up an elaborate process. So. Yes. Macaulay Culkin. Awesome. Awesome in that movie. All right. Moving, um, on. moving on to my number five. Uh, my number five uh, actor. This role was the first in a long career, a very good career. Um, Natalie Portman in The Professional. All right. Uh, 12 years old uh, in, in this film. Um, okay. This performance if it was in the wrong hands, could have made the film really, really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you have like this That's borderline in parts. <laughs> kid and this like middle-aged man, you know, teaming up against, you know, Gary Oldman and his team of killers. Uh, but Natalie Portman has this sort of, this sort of presence, this kind of weight mm-hmm. and seriousness about her performance, which totally makes her believable that she can like you know be on the same level as uh, jean reno uh, in the film Mm -hmm. um it's like if it was in the wrong hands if it was with a different actress um it would have been completely um unbelievable um it could have been really like i like i said earlier awkward and and weird um but she pulled it off so yeah i don't know if i've seen like the wrong cut of this film or something aren't mm-hmm. there like two versions but i think there i is, don't yeah. i don't get yeah. the big whoop with this movie so i think i must have watched the wrong one because everybody i know loves it except mm. for me i'm like i don't get it but yeah. i do like natalie portman yeah so okay my number four um this is a movie from last year 2010 by one of my favorite directors sofia coppola mm. Elle fanning in somewhere mm. she was 11 Mm. Um, this kid, another one that's just the real deal. I think she's obviously also phenomenal in Super 8. Mm-hmm. Um, but her, uh, performance in this film is an, it's another one where, like, the kid has to provide the perfect balancing point for the adult to play off of, or it's just not going to work. And there are so many moments in this movie, I know a lot of people thought it was kind of slow or kind of whatever, but there, there's so much that goes sort of unsaid in in looks between mm-hmm. her and Steven Dorff as her sort of estranged, but uh, she's quite fond of him kind of father that she has to stay with for a while. And um, it's, it's great. Like, I just want to like rewind and watch again and be like, how did they like, how do you get an 11 year old to like sell that much without a word? And yeah, you know, it, it, there's something pure about, the, about her performance and about her sensibility and all the roles I've seen her in so far. She's really like, not just one of my favorite kid actresses, but one of my favorite actresses mm-hmm. working today. Yeah. Dakota Fanning, you need to pick your game up because... <laughs> no slam sister... on Dakota. She's good, too. No, but, but I think Elle Fanning's Elle's just like had the, like, yeah, you know, she's... she's going off, man. Yeah, like, she's every had role, some prime roles good. lately. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, okay, moving on to my number fourth uh, performance or actor. 1999, Oscar-nominated, Haley Joel Osment in The Sixth Sense. All right, yeah. Um, again, you know... The role that Haley Joel Osment plays requires him to be able to do things that in any other performance or any other uh, performer's hands would be completely unbelievable. Um, He's so good at playing this kid who just 
has all these like literally demons <laughs> haunting him um, but at the same time his character is the catalyst for helping pretty much everyone else that's around him yeah. dealing with their own issues um, it's a very good performance and I mean, to have the ability to say something like, I see dead people, and make it totally, you know, believable that, you know, mm -hmm. for us to, you know, get into and everything like that, it takes a lot of skill. Um, and, you know, like I said, Haley Joel Osment, he, he killed yeah. it in that role. So. I wonder if he'll ever have, like, a real comeback, because I think he's got some talent there. Like, there's some natural talent. Yeah, there. yeah. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Hmm. Okay, my number three, also a fairly recent film, 2009. Max Records in Where the Wild Things Are. Ooh, okay. Um, you know, I like this movie, and no, I, like I it don't. Too. I think there have been some really fair criticisms of it, but I think as like a picture of what it really feels like sometimes to be a kid to have like no control over your own existence and just want to break out and you know manifest those frustrations in some way. I think it's it's very good mm -hmm. and obviously the effects are very good so this kid is playing off of inanimate things you know like <laughs> yeah, like monsters that much. is hard for adults mm -hmm. and uh, you know you might say like a kid's better at playing make-believe or whatever but mm -hmm. like no when i saw this film for the first time i saw it at the cinerama before it actually came out and max records was there and they did like an interview with him beforehand what a like really like, he understood what he had done in that film. He mm -hmm. wasn't just like, well, I just played around and they had the camera on and blah, blah, blah. Like, he knew that it was difficult and that he had pulled it off. Right. And it was awesome to hear that because it, like, really, like, we shouldn't give him any short shrift. We shouldn't give a lot of kid actors like this. Like, well, they just, the camera captures their innocence. Mm -hmm. That was a tough performance. And it he did was. Yeah. such a good job. Yeah, Such it really a good job. Is. I really wish he was going to be in more stuff. I haven't seen him, mm -hmm. like, in anything else that was going to come out. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. 100% uh, on that performance and in that film. I really like Where the Wild Things Are. Um, underrated, definitely. I think it's underrated. Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving on to my number three. You've already talked about him, Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. I mean, you gotta love him, man. You gotta love Kevin. I mean, the entire... <laughs> He's such the, a little shit, though. Yeah, the entire but movie, so great. The entire movie is just based off of his own charisma. And yep. if he didn't have, like, that charisma, that likability, he like you said, would have been completely annoying. How painful. Like, I can picture some other kids from other movies talking to themselves in the mirror and everything, and I can't believe it would work yeah, with very I many mean, actors. He makes us believe that he can rig that house to like with all those booby traps and, like, <laughs> outwit these, like, you know, robbers house. and everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, it. <laughs> it, it worked in the first one, and, I, I mean, I like the second one, too. I think I think the yeah, charisma like that the worked in the first too, one yeah. works in the second one also. Yeah. So yeah. Macaulay Culkin, he, he, he did it in that movie, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good times. All right. Uh, my number two, we don't need to talk about it too long because I talk about it all the time, but I don't think I've talked about this aspect of it quite as much. And uh, so that's Henry Thomas as Elliot in E.T. Uh, um, yes. He was, I think, 10 when they made this movie. And uh, just another thing where you're having to act off of an inanimate object and, mm -hmm. ma and make it work. And obviously the other kids in the movie are fantastic as well. Um, but he has the emotional... Uh, heft behind mm -hmm. the climax that he has to sell does a great job um i've seen henry thomas in some stuff more recently and he's still quite good like i wish he i've seen him in a couple of indie films i know he was in the adaptation of i capture the castle which is one of my favorite books of all time and did a great great job um i wish he would start to pick up and have more of an adult career because he's still still a great actor yeah i mean Elliot E.T. That's, I mean, what else can you say? It's classic. It's classic. Running around in his pajamas. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, moving on to my number two film. Uh, I decided to go way back on this one, and it's a little bit of a cheat because I put two people here. <laughs> oh. Two performances, same film, 1952, uh, Rene Clement's uh, Forbidden Games. Um, the care, the people or the kids in this movie. I'm going to kill their names because in French, George <laughs> Pojoli and Bridget Fossey. Uh, George was 12 years old. Bridget was six in this film. Brigitte. Brigitte. <laughs> six. All right. World War II in France. Um, two kids that have to deal with like all this tragedy that happens between them and. 
uh, the the kid, the boy in the film, kind of helps uh, the younger girl uh, kind of deal with death and tragedy in this sort of really, really interesting and creative way. It's a really heartbreaking film that would not have worked if these kids were not believable in their mm -hmm. performances. Um, they work together so, so well. Um, I mean, it's really one of my favorite French films, my one of my favorite uh, World War II movies. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. It's very, very good. It's it's sad. It's it's definitely sad, but a it's sad World War II movie. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I know there's not many of those out there, but it's definitely worth checking out. All right, so. noted. Um, my number one is also a French movie, Hello. much more recent from 1996, and this is the film Ponette, which mm. uh, is so sad. Mm -hmm. And the main actress in it. In it Four years old. Victoire old. Does, I don't does know how even, to pronounce her last name. Does a four year old even know what's going on? <laughs> she must have because, right? like, when I first started watching the movie, it's about like a four year old who her, is in a car accident with her mom. Mom dies. It opens with dad, like, telling the kid, Mommy's not coming back, you mm -hmm. know, and then it follows her through the next few weeks as she tries to, like, kind of deal with this. And she's left at her aunt's house with her cousins. And she goes, she's trying to go to school and live a normal life, but she's convinced that if she's just. Um, if she's good enough, if she asks God enough, then she'll be able to talk to her mom one last time. Mm -hmm. So heartbreaking, right? And you, like, I thought as I started to watch it, like, this must be like, they just turned the cameras on and rolled and then they edited together, mm -hmm. like, you know, what sounded like a script from there. Mm -hmm. I think this kid was memorizing lines because wow. there is stuff in there where I'm like a four-year-old, like, you can't, not that the individual lines don't sound like what a four-year-old would say, but you can't make the scene go from A to B that seamlessly wow if you're four <laughs> like <laughs> unless tough. you're like the best editor of all time but i mean it's not like it's cutting off i don't know watch this movie it's on netflix streaming right now i mm -hmm. checked and it's just unreal like wow. four years old i think she won like best actress at can or something like that Holy crap. that year because people were just like what could she even hold up? the award <laughs> It's like, a oh. really, really impressive movie and worth the sort of like depression that cool. it brings on. Worth cool. it. Cool. Okay, moving on to my number one film, uh, or number one performance is from 2007. It is Ramin Barani's Chop Shop. Oh, I still haven't seen and this one. And the actor is Alejandro Polanco. 12 years old in this film. Wow. I mean, when I saw... First off, Ramin Barani is probably one of the best directors working today. I, I wish he would make more films because everything he's he's done is absolutely terrific. This film is no exception. The kid in this movie, 12 years old, he's playing this uh, street kid in, in Queens, New York, living in an auto-like shop. Um, just trying to survive. It's kind of reminiscent of like the uh, Italian uh, near realist films where mm -hmm. it's all about like just trying to survive and everything like that. And man, this kid had everything that I mentioned in every other um, l mention in this list. He has the charisma, he has the likability, but at the same time, he has the seriousness to uh, do things and, and talk to people and be treated like, like an equal. It's absolutely amazing this kid it's just so realistic i mean the kid had no prior training it was like his first role straight off the streets and he pulled off a performance that i mean even now after having seen it like a long time ago i still remember it nice it's it's definitely worth it definitely worth it so all right well i mean i could go on i have so many other ones there's, and there's I have, a lot and there i have to say there were actually like a lot of ones that i would have had on this list but the kid was like 13 when they did oh yeah it. just like right Haley steinfeld yeah. and true great you know but um let us know what you would have put on your top five check out other stuff we've got going on at mcguffinpodcast.com and we will see you next time see ya